Now, though, let's hear about a unique form of breakfast club which is springing up internationally, I've just heard. Groups of veterans and currently serving members of all branches of the military are coming together to support each other, not only in making the adjustment to life out of the forces, but also those who struggled with the memory of what they've experienced whilst serving. Well, the organisation behind the idea was founded here in Hull. It's not a charity or a business and no money is involved at all, according to the man behind it. Derek Hardman is with me now along with Andy Batty who is also involved in the club thank you very much both of you for joining me um I'll start with you then Derek tell yep. me what happens at, at these breakfast clubs uh well I, I don't know how much I can say on air really but <laughs> no but we turn up sure usually, it's weekly. Yeah, we, t- we turn up weekly uh well we do here in Hull uh there's now currently now 57 breakfast clubs uh internationally uh and we we turn up here in Hull weekly, have a bit of banter, eat breakfast, bounce off each other, network. Uh, we all work in different trades and things nowadays, so uh, we, we help each other out in that respect. So, And, and a, a lot of the other breakfast clubs all over the, the world now, as it turns out, uh, they have different meeting times. Some of them, I, I mean, I even know one that meets in an afternoon on a weekday, but mm-hmm. uh, that's entirely up to them. Because I, I, I've always preferred, uh, although people... I get messages seeking guidance. So I prefer them to be autonomous and make their own rules. But uh, the network's good, the fact that people can travel around the country and find a breakfast club. That's a, it's a wonderful success mm. story, isn't it? Mm. So, and it was actually set up by you, and now, it's, as you've been saying to me when we were listening to the record, the um, the idea has been picked up by people from all around the world. So it's, it's clearly something that people need, and they thought, yeah, that's going to work here. T- t- explain to me why you set it up in the first place. Well, uh, it was a bit selfish, really. It was for me. I mean, uh, um, uh, Pete Back is, is a motor engineer on Sutton Field. And uh, I was looking for somebody that knew his way around a military vehicle for a business I was starting. And uh, somebody pointed me at Pete. I went down there, and it's the rest is kind of history. You know, I inv- invited somebody to come along, and another veteran. Uh, he invited somebody. You know, there was already a couple of veterans used to turn up there. And we in, uh, ended up coining it the Breakfast Club. Uh, and then last year, it just went absolutely ballistic. Uh, it was only because other veterans had come to visit me, and we'd, they'd been to the Breakfast Club. And I suggested they started breakfast clubs in other areas, and Newcastle was the next one. So, uh, and what is your history then in the military? Uh, I'm ex Royal Engineers. Uh, um, signed up in 1981, came out in 1991. Um, so, uh, and, and, and uh, funnily enough, I was in Army Cadets with, with Andy here uh, before I joined up, and. Uh, we bumped into each other, ended up serving at the same regiment for a while while I was in in the military, so I've known Andy for a long, long time. And how useful is it then for, for both of you, having been in the military, to, to um, meet up with other people? Very important, very important. The welfare side is just... People don't understand that when you leave the army, you leave a way of life, you leave a, a structure that's very... Stru- it's so structured, you follow the structure, and then you're left on your own devices. Mm. And you, you don't only miss the support you get. You, you miss your buddies, you miss your pals, and there's that real strong bond you have with your, with your, your fellow veterans. And there is a very dry sense of humour in the squad of humour, and you miss that. And you don't realise until we turned up at the breakfast clubs that it was we were missing that. And you're missing your, your, your network of friends. I know, I, like I've known Derek for 35 years, and I know if I phone him up and say to him, I need this doing, Derek, it'll be done. Yeah. And you miss that that real strong bond that you've got. And and you do spend time, I suppose, when you're in the military, whether you're um, training or whether you are seeing service, you're with people every minute of the day, eating, exactly. living, sleeping together. And that's that becomes something that I suppose to begin with it might seem negative, but then you get used to it. And as you say, it's something that you miss. It is. The, 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 there was always that, comrade, you know... Um, I served uh, all over the place, including the Falklands conflict and, and things like that. And you, people don't realise that you actually rely on them people for your life, mm. not just the way of the way you live. It's your life. You you know you can rely on them to save your life, and that camaraderie it really does build a really strong friend bronze bond. And now I, I in my daytime job, I now do welfare and, and, and um, housing support. And I've used them skills to to make sure things. So uh, this is what I do at the breakfast club. People need 
benefits advice, they need housing advice, I'll do that. Um, we have guys who are kitchen fitters. If you need your kitchen doing, we mm-hmm. have a plasterer. If we need a plastering doing, and all that just makes such a difference. So it's a, it's a community that's kind of quite organically thrown itself together. Well, not thrown itself because you've been there, yeah, you know, yeah. to, to make sure it's happened. But it's developed in that way, hasn't it? Yeah. Well, I, I was at a conference recently, and that, that I was asked to explain to a, a lot of people that were uh, n- no military background how how what the difference was, if you like, between. Uh, military and civilian and you know p- p- people talk about this and you never sort of um, nobody ever puts a, the finger on it sort of thing but um the military when you join up you go through your, your basic training etc and whatever service uh it, it's it's a kind of conditioning i'm not going to say brainwashing i think that's too strong but it is a kind of conditioning and by the time you're finished in your your basic training every serviceman will tell you this you're a changed person the, th- the thing is, though, the military train you to be a soldier, a sailor, an airman. They don't train you to be a civilian when you come back out. Mm. Uh, there's, and, and I've said to, to, to these people recently, uh, there isn't a, a, another job that, I, that you can point to, really, that's the same. Because when I walked out the gates for the last time, I lost 1,500 brothers. I lost my, my home. I lost uh, my, my, my working clothes. I lost some of my identity. Uh, I came back and was totally isolated back in my hometown. Uh, the, the friends that I had before I joined up uh, were long since disappeared into the woodwork. And, and uh, you don't realise at the time when you leave what a terrible, awful transition it becomes, you know, going from military life into civilian life. How much do you think your family understood about that? Uh, well, uh, my, my father's ex-military as well, so... He perhaps had some sort of idea of what it was like, but the, you know it's still difficult. How, how you know it's just I suppose it's like uh, any parent or something looking to their child to help them with some sort of issue that they have. You can't always, you know, the generation gap, etc. You can't always put your finger on it. You can't always be that helpful. And, and a lot of the time, military personnel, in fact, most of the time, I would say, would be too proud to ask for help anyway. They've been taught to be self-reliant, mm. and then they struggle on. But the the Breakfast Club, uh, uh, I think for a lot of people, the more I get involved in it, the more important I realise it, it, it's become for the for the veterans because it's a support network. It's that uh, ne- network of camaraderie that, that, that they lost that was fundamental to them when they was in. Yeah, and by making it a great breakfast club, I suppose it's an acceptable form of help, isn't it? It's uh, That's it, it. it's less formal than they can actually turn going up to a if they want to. They don't mm-hmm. have to turn up if they want to. It's just it's just completely informal. There's no fees no you know there's no registration you know we we in fact we've got a couple of new guys at the the breakfast club the bbc we call it ironically right, yeah. barker's breakfast club yeah they, you can call it that that's yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't mind us stealing the name but we thought it was kind of funny at the time you know being at barker's motor yeah. engineers was barker's breakfast Let, let's club. see which one lasts longer <laughs> <laughs> um and i mean you were saying Dell, the transition from soldier to civilian that nobody really trains you to be uh, a civilian which is a really interesting point i mean mm. That's a that's a big gap, really, isn't it? And it's a it's, massive industry. It's been around for decades. Yeah. You know, why haven't they done that yet? Well, I have no idea. But if you think about it, most military personnel join the military from school. Mm-hmm. So they're going from uh, living in the parents' home where all bills are paid, where everything's done for them. They go straight into the military. Uh, when you get paid in the military, all your expenses are taken out before you even see money. So by the time you hit Civvy Street, say... I don't know, your late 20s, early 30s, you have no idea how to pay bills, you've no idea how to find somewhere to live, for, you know, pay rent, pay, you know, you've, you've no clue. Mm. And which has all been sort of stuff that parents have helped their kids with when they've left home normally, yeah. but the military is a different thing because you are gone completely. Yeah. Uh, tell me about your history in the military, Andy. Well, as I say, I, I, I joined the Army in 1979 when I left school and went to the Army Apprentice College and served in the Royal Engineers uh, until 1990. And when you look at it, it was a case of, I went straight from school, like Derek says, I went straight from school at 16 into the military. Mm. And I served uh, in Northern Ireland, and then you look at uh, you know, Cyprus and, and Germany and, and other places, you know, the Falklands, I, would, I served in the Falklands a few times. It was one of them things where you just go and it's your job to take to put your life on the line that's what you, you're trained to do you're trained to put your life on the line for, for your country and that's what you do willingly 
mm. without a doubt. And then when you come out, uh, there's a lot to be said for. We talk about a lot of, about PTSD and stuff like that. A lot of the time, I look at that as making the adjustment. It's hard to make that adjustment back from being. We, we're adrenaline junkies. We're trained to be adrenaline junkies. We put our lives on the line every day when we're in the military, and then you come out. And what do you do? You're bored. I went from job to job to job, trying to find a job that stimulated my mind and also challenged me because I couldn't find it. So it must have been your approach to the jobs that changed rather than the jobs themselves yes, when you exactly, did finally exactly. something. As I've, got, as I've got older and older, you know, I'm in my 50s now and, and as I've got older, I've realised that, you know, that buzz isn't there. So, but I meet the guys on the Breakfast Club and we do, we do daft, stupid things together and, and, you know, just to try and give you that adrenaline buzz. And there's a lot to be said for the support, like, both uh, Derek's especially is involved in the whole veteran support centre on Beverly Road, and they do quite a lot with the looking at accommodation, helping people to move forward. What we do is look at the things that aren't there: the banter, the friendship, the buddy buddy system, yeah. as we used to call it in the army. You know, when we used to put our gas masks on and stuff like that, we used to call it the buddy buddy system. So your mate checked you out, so you knew your mate was checking you to make sure you could survive yeah. so and that's what we do we offer the buddy buddy system the friendship you know knowing that somebody's there so they're allegedly all listening back there hopefully they haven't switched channels by now i want to see when you, <laughs> once you left them and i hope they haven't eaten my breakfast <laughs> <at> all, <laughs> <really>. <laughs> yeah they've saved you some kept it warm paint me a picture of what's happening back there then have we got a, a butty van then so no no, bacon? no no we've got we've got uh somebody's taking a list no, uh, nora started it before we left Right. Uh, of what everybody's having, bacon okay, and eggs, sausage and egg, Andy, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Nora, Nora Batty. Yeah, yeah. From only uh, from last of summer wine. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, um, they're taking a list. Uh, there's a local cafe that um, usually puts our sandwich order oh, together. They deserve a mention. Who's the local? Cafe? Oh, it's uh, Lakeside. Lakeside. Yeah. Yeah. Right, okay. yeah. And uh, Donna in there. She. She puts all our breakfast together. We've negotiated a breakfast with them, especially for us. Yeah. <laughs> with extras on. With extras on, yeah. It's just such a wonderful idea, yeah. and it's and it's a great success story to hear that people have picked up on the idea around the world. How does that make you feel? Well, I, I'm quite humbled by it, really, to be fair. I, I, I mean, uh, as I say, the longer it goes on, the more important I realise it is becoming for a lot of veterans. Uh, can I, have I got time to give you a, a short story? About Certainly, something? yeah. I got contacted by a, f- a female administrator from one of the other breakfast clubs. Uh, it'd be about a month ago now. About a uh, a new lad she'd got turned up, and he said, "Oh, he was his ex para reg, you know, para uh, paratrooper." So, uh, and and she said that the, during the breakfast, I'd noticed he was sat at the far end of the table, and his head was down, and she said I could see uh, tears dropping off the end of his nose. So I quietly went down there and put my arm around him and said, "Are you all right?" And he said, I can't believe this. And she said, what? What can't you believe? He said, I'm home. Mm. And, and I, he was sat in a cafe having breakfast yeah. with a few people. But he was home. Yeah, and that's and that, how important it is to and, and that kind of, you know, it, it, that's that's kind of what it's all about, really. That, yeah. that kind of sums it up. Yeah. I, I bet you're tempted, aren't you, to get all these people from around the world and have a, one great big breakfast club. <laughs> Wouldn't that be fun? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Derek last week had attended uh, the Royal Engineers have what we call Sapper Fest, right. and Sapper Fest is organised once a year where a group of seven hundred, eight hundred sappers get together for a big weekender, and it's uh, it's, a, it's an excuse to get drunk. Yeah, in a field. Uh, in a field. Yeah. And uh, we said one day we'll have a breakfast club one where we'll pull all the breakfast clubs together, invite them all to come to a field somewhere, to a field somewhere, and just do what we used to do in, in the military: be friends, get drunk, have a laugh. Yeah. Blow off some steam. Blow yeah. off some steam. What a wonderful idea. There's a Veterans Weekend, by the way, happening oh, next we'll weekend. Are you involved we'll in there. that? Okay, we'll that's at East Park, of course. Yeah. We'll have a stand along with the whole Veterans Support Centre because they do, they're do. they one of the few military charities in the country that have actually accommodation for people so they can actually accommodate homeless veterans. And we... And we're going to be there sharing a stand with them and the QA Association. Right, so we'll if anybody would like to... Actually, well, last time we went to the Veterans uh, Day, which was last year, my fellow, who's, who's quite a tall bloke, and uh, the people from the Veterans Stand came up to him and said, are you an ex-military man? said, not at all. He's not yeah. at all. He's just really tall. Yeah. But he can pass for a soldier. I think, <laughs> which I suppose is fairly handy in yeah. some, some situations. Yeah. <laughs> um, producer Steve has just said in my ear, ask him about the TV thing. I don't know what that means. We was on... Uh, we've been interviewed uh, for Veterans... For Forces TV, Forces TV, BFBS uh, came down. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Forces TV came down. Uh, they filmed us at our breakfast club because it was the first breakfast club. Interviewed us, and we, it was about a five-minute slot on on the television, which 
then all the breakfast club said people who were ex forces who've been watching forces TV have started to come along and it increased numbers. Oh, fantastic! So you know, we as we said, we we've got our, a, a, a web page with all the addresses of all the breakfast clubs on. You know, if you're in Hull, come to Peter Barker's Motor Engineers on Sutton Fields, and on a Saturday on, morning, on a Saturday morning, about half past nine, yeah. Quarter past half past nine, come and have a breakfast with us, have some banter and, and get to know us. It's a wonderful idea. Well, let's hope that there are people listening who um, who need that. You know, maybe it might be yeah. that one thing that they've been le- looking for since they uh, entered Civvy Street again. Thank you, both of you, for coming back. And well, you're going you. back to your breakfast now. I am, thank you. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm needing my breakfast now. Well, yeah. I hope your egg yolk hasn't gone hard, because I'd hate that. I'd be furious. <laughs> thank you once again, and good luck with it. And keep us posted if you do do the big breakfast as well. We certainly will, yeah.